Uh, well, hey folks, um, you joined me in my garage again, uh, similar to my last video, and uh, because I'm still <laughs> freaking COVID positive, uh, it's only a couple days after that video, but still, um, can't see anybody, can't hang out with my family, can't go see my friends, so I'll make more videos. Uh, probably should have been doing this all along anyway, like I said. So um, if you saw my last video, and thank you to all of you who did watch it, uh, it seemed to be quite an uptick. Uh, so thank you for that, that's a really nice surprise. Uh, especially as a good send off of that car. Uh, again, that video, for those of you just joining me now, um, was a proper three year, nine month send off of my 2018 Honda Clarity, which as I said is, was the last but one um, step in my quest for when you have a practical car, because we're all practical people or have to be, uh, from the minivan world to, I went through a station wagon, diesel station wagon sta stage, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, which was the Clarity, and now that car over there, which is my 2022, actually, Tesla Model 3. Uh, and I will do a proper introduction video to that and kind of give you, uh, you folks a bit of a walk around. Now, it's certainly no surprise. Uh, there are about a bazillion white Tesla Model 3s on the world. But, you know, um, for those of you who have graciously uh, voiced interest in uh, what I'm doing and what I bought, uh, I'd happily go through it and give you my thoughts. Um, things like build quality, what I picked up, and all the rest of that. However, the point of this video will be more to the tune of the practicality aspect. So this car has big shoes to fill. Uh, clearly with the clarity as of my proof of concept for that 93,000 kilometers, again, I keep going back to that, um, was you know when you can drive uh, the same car in two different modes, EV or uh, like full EV or hybrid, and you realize that uh, EV is way cheaper. I'm thrilled to to experiment or to experience rather what this thing will give me, the uh, the the um, Tesla that is, with respect to that. And to that end, uh, I just checked. I have just shy of 7,000 kilometers on this thing. Uh, I've done a couple of big trips to the northern part of the province where I live here for work. Uh, and for uh, my girl's hockey team. <laughs> so that's given me some good points on the graph. Uh, I'll give some details about that because I live in a place where there aren't a lot of superchargers. Um, but also it gives me a really good smattering, uh, you know, points on the graph, so to speak, of uh, my typical, what I can expect from this car during some of the coldest months of the year. Now, again, I picked up this car December 29th uh, of 2021. So let's call it Jan 1. It's April 26th right now, um, 7,000 kilometers, which is kind of a lot. And I didn't have it for a month because it was getting repaired. Um, due to a deer uh, collision. More on that in another video also, perhaps. But I have enough uh, data now to really grind the numbers to see just how efficient or maybe not so efficient this car has been for that 7,000 kilometers. So I'm gonna take a break from my talking head. I'm gonna go into the car and pull the data. I'll show you folks how to do it. And then I'm actually gonna off camera, I'm gonna run some numbers and just see, cause I wanna do the dollar per, kilowatt hour. Uh, I mean, I know what that is in my house. I want to know what that is for uh, the superchargers. Uh, it's not immediately obvious, actually. Um, and then obviously my, my how many pennies per kilometer uh, does this thing cost? Because I have all that, all those numbers for the clarity. <laughs> okay, this one. Uh, okay, well, that didn't take me as long as I thought. Uh, math isn't that hard at the end of the day. Um, so when I uh, pulled the data off the car, I always point over there because it, be, it happens to be sitting there. Um, uh, I took all of January, I actually pulled out the January numbers earlier because I was trying to remember that uh, with this car, it keeps about five or six trips or so, plus it will keep the data from trip A and trip B. And in my case, trip B is exclusively the entire uh, uh, ownership experience so far, i.e. I have not reset trip B. I don't need that many trip odometers. But uh, trip A, uh, oh, you can use them both, frankly. So if you do want to keep track of your specific trip usage, just like you would in the old days with your mileage, you can do that as well. However, so that means the data I have for this car is all of January for the most part, which I, I I reiterate, was minus 35 for a good chunk of it, like two, two, two plus weeks. Uh, and that will crush the efficiency of anything, let alone anything battery powered. Uh, so that's in there. So that's again, a good, a good representation of that. The other set of data I have is um, uh, some of January, uh, but pretty much to about April. So uh, I have that as well. And then I have the grand total. So I'm gonna go through the numbers. Uh, it's a bit pedantic, apologize, but that's why I'm here. This is to compare the efficiency of my first four months of ownership here. Uh, 
to the clarity as well because I have it in the same numbers there. So uh, January uh, 2022, I drove 1,988 kilometers. Um, I used 585 kilowatt hours for that. And while this next stat seems a little silly, it's actually a good one to pay attention to. It's the kilometers per kilowatt hour because it gives you a good sense, I mean, outside of your um, cost per kilometer, which I'll get into as well, it does give you a really good sense of rate of change, right? So higher the better, obviously you want more kilometers per kilowatt hour. So for that cold snap for January, 3.39 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So um, at 17 cents a kilowatt hour, which is what I pay, I've locked that down by the way, I'll go on off of a, I'll go on a diatribe a little bit about how I had to do that. But that gives me um, a price per kilometer for some of the coldest, the coldest month of the year so far of bang on a nickel per kilometer. So five cents per kilometer uh, through that cold snap. So uh, a quick aside about my uh, kilowatt hour um, uh, cost, that includes delivery, taxes, everything, because of course uh, that can vary wildly depending on where you are. And if you're on a variable rate, that can also get you. That caught me actually before because uh, I was on a variable rate and I asked them what the rate was. They said, oh, 6.3 cents per kilowatt hour even. I said, well, that sounds fantastic. They gave me that for exactly one day and then they jacked it up to 22 cents a kilowatt hour and then that didn't even include all the all the delivery fees and things like that so you have to watch that uh i mean i'm in canada we regulate that stuff pretty good but uh it can vary wildly so i pinned these folks down to 17 cents a kilowatt hour uh delivered to my door including taxes uh, and I actually have a two cent rider on that. So I have hundred uh, percent renewable energy on that, which, you know, I thought was worth it compared to everything else. So locked in at 17 cents. So gas can go up and down and my, uh, ch cost per charge will stay exactly the same. So, okay. January, that's where we were. So there's a period about a bit of January to call it April. Uh, some parts of April, I drove 6,193 kilometers. And in that time I used 1,296 kilowatt hours. Importantly though, my range, uh, my kilometers per kilowatt hour went up from 3.4 roughly before to 4.778, so 4.8 almost. Uh, so that dropped my price per kilometer down to 3.6 cents. So that's a pretty significant drop. Um, in that period. And again, it wasn't all, you know, 35 degrees Celsius above hundred degrees Fahrenheit kind of thing. It was still, you know, below zero snow on the ground, uh, driving in winter conditions as well. Just, it wasn't that heartbreaking minus 35 that we got there for a period. So, uh, to bring me to my grand total though, which is every kilometer that thing's seen since I rolled it into my house, uh, I've gone 6,944 kilometers. I've used 1,549 kilowatt hours. And that, uh, because it includes January, it lowers my kilometer per kilowatt hour rate from 4.78 uh, for the warmer months to 4.48. Uh, so that's everything, every every uh, inch that thing's driven, that's what it's caught. It's, uh, uh, its efficiency is and brings me to a lifetime price per kilometer of 3.8 cents. So five cents per, per, per kilometer in some of that really harsh winter. Uh, and I drove a lot. I didn't just drive a little, obviously, 2,000 uh, kilometers there. So, um, you know, it's trending in the right directions. To put that in perspective, though, um, again, because this is all a part of my um, series of how to get more efficient uh, and, uh, you know, more practical with each car that I buy, uh, <laughs> the Clarity in its lifetime, just to reiterate there, uh, on its EV side, that's all I'm looking at here, 70,000 kilometers EV, uh, used 18,946 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, and that its lifetime kilometers per kilowatt hour was 3.69. So call it 3.7, uh, better than the, the Tesla did in the winter, but pretty substantially lower, uh, you know, 4.48 to 3.7. Uh, that's a good chunk. That's a good percentage uh, lower than, than the Tesla so far. And that brought my lifetime per kilometer um, uh, fee for the clarity on full EV to 4.6 using 17 cents a kilowatt hour again as a baseline. So already, uh, save for the, uh, the colder months, the Tesla is tracking so far in the first 7,000 kilometers or so to be more efficient, i.e. more range per kilowatt hour than the Clarity, which itself I thought was, uh, I mean, I had no experience before, but it seemed very good. So anyway, um, lots of numbers, sorry for that, kind of pedantic, but again, in the interest of efficiency and pro uh, practicality, this is where I am. So. Um, obviously that means that if I do plan on keeping this car for 20 years, which is my goal, um, 
had the clarity for almost four, so there's no reason why I can't keep this thing and really just crush it. Because uh, for every $150 on maintenance that you spend, uh, every 10 bucks here, Canadian, I get 350 kilometers of range uh, as a kind of ballpark figure. So all of those dollars and cents that go towards maintenance can go instead towards straight up energy. It's, it adds up uh, quickly. So you end up spending that money only on um, driving your butt around town. So anyway, uh, enough of that. That's probably enough numbers for one day. Thanks for listening to me, folks. Uh, as always, I really appreciate your comments and uh, uh, feedback. Uh, this is tons of fun for me. So, uh, and especially since I'm still COVID positive, it gives me something to do. Anyway, all the best folks. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Take care.